Okay, people. So today I checked out, well, I mean this week, right? Checked out the um the first book in a trilogy from Jonathan French. So this is called The Great Bastards, and it is book one of the Lot Lands trilogy. Now, one of the big things about this book, right? So it was first published in 2015, and French entered it into Mark Lawrence's, uh, I think it's an annual um, self-published uh, book um, competition. Uh, yeah, I, I feel that's the, the gist of it. Um, yeah, it, it's, whoa, I'm trying to think of what the hell he calls it, right? It's the SP, um, SP something, SPF. Or is it SFB, SPFBO? Uh, yes, that's it. Uh, yeah. So I'm imagining that self published fantasy book offering. Uh, I don't know. But it, it's this big competition. 300 books were entered. And uh, yeah, the Grey Bastard supposedly won it handily, handily, which, you know, that is pretty impressive. And before the competition had finished, French had been offered a two book deal with Crown Publishing, right? So that means, you know, turning it into a trilogy. Right, so they bought the rights to the Great Bastards and another two books. So uh, I mean, that's pretty huge, right? That that's pretty impressive. So yeah, that that was the whole big thing coming into this. So I was like, all right, let me uh, let me check it out. Uh, so the gist of the book is this: Jackal is proud to be. A grey bastard, member of a sworn brotherhood of half orcs, unloved and unwanted in civilized society. The bastards eke out a hard life in the desolate no man's land called the Lots, protecting frail and noble human civilization from invading hands of vicious, full-blooded orcs. But as Jackal is soon to learn, his pride may be misplaced because a dark secret lies at the heart of the bastards. Existence, one that reveals a horrifying truth behind humanity's tenuous peace with the orcs and exposes a grave danger on the horizon. On the heels of the ultimate betrayal, Jackal must scramble to stop a devastating invasion, even as he wonders where his true loyalties lie. Bum, bum, bum. So yeah, that, I mean, that's the gist of the book. Right. Um, and I think one thing that jumped out to me, right, is I didn't know this going in, but it did feel a lot like Sons of Anarchy, right? Because the you know, the Great Bastards ride hogs, which, you know, another name for a motorcycle is a hog. You know what I mean? And it did, like, it just felt like a, a a motorcycle gang in its nature, right? They, and, you know, I've recently, I was watching Sons of Anarchy, gosh, I figure if I started it last year or the beginning of this year, but 
they you know I mean? they just the, the way they act, right? They hang out with hookers and you know I mean? life of crime and you know the, the the language they use and just all of that definitely came across with these half hooks, right? So there was that. And when we first kind of are introduced to them, yeah, they're in a brothel and some shit goes down. You know what I mean? Some, some crazy shit goes down with some humans. And it's all a bit, it's all a bit messy. All a bit messy. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, that's the thing that jumped off. But, yeah, that, that is a thing. Right, because that's how the book is marketed as what well, I think I saw somewhere it said the love child of Lord of the Rings and Sons of Anarchy. Which, you know, I you can definitely kind of see that, right? You, you definitely see that. I mean, more Sons of Anarchy than Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's a fantasy tale with orcs, elves, hobbits, and a whatnot. But I feel that's the the most it lies with Lord of the Rings. You could probably align it with other fantasy ilk, but yeah, there it is. Now, I think it it does have interesting components to it, you know, and the world is intriguing to a point right you know what i mean I, I think this whole thing um intriguing like the lots are kind of forged out of a war right so yeah i mean you kind of can look at it like uh, the treaty of versailles and the lots were formed after that right because they definitely cause problematic shit you know a bit like the treaty of versailles right so there is that. And yeah, the, the, these hoofs are patrolling and keeping it. There were nine, right? I, I, I don't think there's nine at this stage of the book. But yeah, as I said, look, these hoofs are like motorcycle gangs. And they, they're patrolling. They are seeing off orcs and centaurs. Those are the, the you know, the, the, the real issues here. Which is interesting because, I, yeah, usually centaurs are, I feel they're usually good, right? So I didn't mind that they, they you know, they, they're trying to mix it up a little. That was all good. That was fine. Uh, now, I did, I, I think where this kind of fell off for me it was like, you've got this band of dudes and there's just one female in this band of dudes, right? Which, I mean, we've, I think we've done this so many times, but it is just the way they introduced a female is she comes out to save the day Right, which is yeah, okay, cool. You know, what I mean? you're introducing this your character and you're making them a, a, a strong character that can stand on their own. But it's like, yeah, she's buck naked, right, from the beginning. They, they call her fetching because you know can fetch things for them, right? Get it. So it is. So it was a bit like uh, okay, and just throughout the book, right? Throughout the book, there are so many, so many just dick references. They 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 call them cods in this, right? So there's so many messages. References to be like, oh, don't leave your mouth open. Someone put their cod in it. Or, um, oh, I should hit you around the head with my cod. And it's just like, uh, it, it just got a bit much. 
just got a bit much. So there is all of that. You you then uh, yeah th this female character, hey, the 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 guy that runs the hoof hates her, doesn't want her around. So yeah, she's prove she has to prove that she's one of one of them and all of this, right? But you know she doesn't like guys. She's a lesbian, which. You know, again, it's a little played out, right? Now, what they then say, well, here's the thing. They could, they say she's a lesbian, but, and this is no spoiler, from the Gidea, we're told that she used to get it on with Jackal all the time, but then stopped once she became a member of the Hoof because she wanted to, you know, look professional and all of that so it's just like oh well, if i can't have him i'll just do girls you know it's a bit like uh, oh dear oh dear right one of one of the big points of contention is that the you know the bastards are gonna have to pay for their own whores instead of getting them for free which okay Right, okay. Now, Jackal, he's got his two best friends, Fetching and Oats. Right, Oats is a thrice blood, which means he's more orc than the other, than the normal half orc. Right, I, I, I believe that's it. I feel I've got that right. Um, yeah, and we, we get this constant talk of Jackal wanting to take over the running of the group, right? Again, Sons of Anarchy, right? Jack's wanting to take over from his stepdad, who I can't remember that dude's name. Um, Hellboy, right? Ron Hellman, that's it. Uh, but it, what I, I just found odd was why Jax, right? Now, because the way the other two characters, Oates and Fetching, are kind of set up, it's like that they are strong, like they're good on their own. So you kind of feel that why wouldn't they want to lead the group? You know what I mean? That, that, that was one of the big things that I just thought, huh, that's not explained, right? Oh, we're getting Jack to moan, or Jack will moan all the time. You know, I want to lead the group, and uh, I should lead the group, and it's my right, and blah, blah, blah. But nothing on why the other two wouldn't want to lead, right? Now, that you've got the, the point that a lot of the guys don't really want fetching a part of the group and they just want to fuck her. But that still wouldn't take away the fact that she would want to lead it. You know what I mean? So we have all of this. Now, there's this kind of a twist in the story, probably about a third of the way in. Which, to be honest, it's a third or maybe half of the way in. But it's not a twist, right? With the way it's all led to that point, you know exactly what's going to happen. There's no, you know, shock here. And with the thing, right, you then again, you know, okay, there's more to it, right? It's obvious that there's more to it. It's just a little bit obvious on where the story goes. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, the big threat at the very end, you're like, yeah, obviously that was. Right? When someone never really answers any of your questions, yeah, there's something to that. Right? But they're never pushed on these vague answers and all of that. So, yeah, I just found the book a little too 
a little bit too predictable and it just was going way too hard with the sex references. It, it, it's, it's just a bit like, yo, we, we, you know what I mean? Everyone knows what sex be, right? It, it's just like, this isn't anything new. Like, you don't have to, do, like, it, it's kind of, and I don't want to sound bad, right? But it's kind of felt like it's talked about, like it's, you know, uh, I don't know, like when you're 10, uh, I'd say ten, probably ten is too young. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? When you when you first find out about sex and all of that, and you're like, oh, oh shit. So what do they do? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck a chick. Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. You know what I mean? It, it's just like that, right? It, it just felt a bit too much like that. And hey, here's the thing, people. As I said, it ran away. With the SPFBOs, it ran away, right? According to Martin Lawrence, Mark Lawrence, even. So people love this book. It got a publishing deal before the competition finished. So, hey, there's a lot of people that are going to love this book. You understand? But yeah, it, it, it just didn't really, didn't really work for me just because. I just found it a bit too predictable. Found it a bit too predictable. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the the characters, we've seen characters work in this way before. You know, we've seen it, it's nothing new. And you're, you're saying, oh, we're creating the, you know, a strong female character, but, you haven't really, right? Because anything that she becomes and gets is given to her, right? You know, like it, 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 it's just a bit like, yo, okay, all right, fine, if that's what you're gonna do, man. But uh, as I said, look, a load of people do love the book, and I kind of think if you were a fan of um oh shit what was that book called uh man there's one called level up or die right or um she what was the that other one that i read recently that kind of you know this this felt like it was a similar vein um, shit. Oh, Rise of the Shadow Rogue, right? So I feel if you liked Rise of the Shadow Rogue, and uh, you know, again, a load of people did, or if you liked Level Up or Die, then I I feel right that the great bastards will speak to you. That you know, what I mean, you will enjoy this book. The narration. Uh, by Will Damon is is good. I thought the narration was very good. Uh, so you have that. And, right, as I told you, it's a trilogy. The last part came out in September, I think it was. Right? So, yeah, the next book, book two, is The True Bastards. And the third book is The Free Bastards. So, hey, if you're just looking to get into this now, yeah, you you have some, you know, the ability to actually finish a trilogy. You don't have to wait on, you know, the next parts coming out and all of that. So that's a big bonus. Um, yeah, I, I didn't think this was as good as The Grim Company, but you know what I mean? That, that, that's just me, people. That's just me. But yeah, there you go. Right, the the grey bastards, it's out, and uh, yeah, full trilogy completed, people. So, uh, you know, that, that could be your cup of tea in this fantasy genre.